almost time for kids time. We're gonna be late. It's time to share. There's a world out there looking for a friend like Jesus. It's time to share. There's a world out there. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Hi, boys and girls. Do you like to read stories? I sure do. Sometimes the story is so interesting that I can't wait to find out what happens. So I peek ahead and I read the ending just to see if everything turns out okay. Well, the Bible is full of stories where God told people how their stories would end long before they actually ended. But the people didn't always believe him. They didn't trust God when he said things would turn out okay. Of course, today we can read those stories and we know that things turned out just the way God said they would. Best of all, the Bible tells us how our story is going to end someday. And if we give our hearts to Jesus, it will be a very happy ending. After all, you can always trust God to do exactly what He says He'll do. I'm really happy about that, aren't you? Do you know what else I'm happy about? That's right, it's time for Nature Time! Oh, hi kids, it's me, Rich Aguilera, and I'm glad you're here. As usual, I'm looking around and taking pictures of some of the amazing nature out there. It's everywhere. Anyway, I'm so happy that you're with me here today, because today we're going to learn about dunes. What are we going to learn about? Dunes! <laughs> That's right, dunes, come on. So you're probably wondering, what is a dune? It's a giant pile of sand. Well, how did it get there? Well, the biggest factor in forming a sand dune is wind. What is the biggest factor? Wind! That's right, wind. With this much wind, anything would get blown around! especially something tiny like sand. Sand grains come in different sizes. The small grains will get carried through the wind, but the larger grains will actually bounce along the surface. Boing, boing, boing. Which kind of grains will bounce along the surface? Larger ones! That's right, the larger ones. I'm gonna take a close-up picture of the sand. You know, if we want to get a really good look at the dunes, we got to get out into the middle. The best way to do that is on one of these. Come on, guys. sand blows around, the dunes form two slopes. As the sand blows this way, it forms the windward face, the flatter slope. The back side of the dune, the steep side, is called the leeward side of the dune. What's it called? Leeward! That's right, the leeward side of the dune. Hey, I'm gonna take a picture. The windward side and the steep leeward side. Maybe I'll run down the leeward side. Ah! Sand dunes aren't found everywhere, but sandy beaches like this are very common around the world. I'm gonna take another picture. Walking on the beach reminds me of a story I once heard. I wanna tell it to you. This person writes, one night I had a dream that I was walking on the beach with God. As we walked, we talked about the different moments of my life. That's when I looked back and noticed that there was two sets of footprints, mine and God's. 
I noticed that during the hardest time of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I got worried about this, so I asked God, Lord, I thought you said that if I follow you, you would be with me always. But I noticed that during the hardest times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. Lord, why would you leave me during the times that I needed you the most? In my dream, God replied, my precious child, I would never leave you. During those hard times, when you only saw one pair of footprints, I was carrying you. Kids, if you ask God to be number one in your life, He will never leave you. I hope you remember that story every time you go to the beach. There are so many incredible places in the world. Another reminder of the amazing things that God has made. And of course, all the pictures we take help us remember all the cool nature we saw. Do you want to see all the pictures I took? You can. Just go to our website, kidstimeforjesus.org, and click on Nature Time. Well, I really had a lot of fun checking out these sand dunes with you. Remember, God is the creator. Nature is his masterpiece. See ya. Welcome to Learning Time. Glad you joined us today. Hey, we got a great lesson, but you know what? I've got some helpers and let's find out who they are. So tell me your name and where are you from? My name is Jovi and I'm from West Frankfurt. Well, I'm glad you're here to help us, Jovi. And you are? My name is Kendra and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Well, I'm glad you're here too, Kendra. And you are? My name is Elise and I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan. I'm glad you're here, Elise. Now today, We've got this lesson, and it's a fun lesson. It's all about blowing bubbles, and it's called bubbleology. Isn't that a fun word? Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? We've got to put on our safety glasses, and I'm going to put my glasses on because we don't want to get bubble mix in our eyes, right? Right. Hey, have you ever had soap in your eyes? Yes. No. Not a fun thing. So, you know, but before we blow bubbles, we want, we, this is a very special recipe. We're going to show you, it's a secret recipe about blowing bubbles. First of all, what do we need? Some dishwashing what? Soap. Soap. And you can use any color, any kind. And this is the secret ingredient right there. What is that called? Glycerin. Glycerin. Glycerin is the secret ingredient because it makes those bubbles last and last and last. And that's what we want. We want strong bubbles, right? Right. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is what we got. We got bubble mix right here. So I want you to pour the bubble mix right into your bowl, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow one bubble, just one bubble. So I'm going to put this little pipe bed in here, and then we're going to blow a bubble. And there's oh, and there's my bubble. But you know what? It popped, didn't it? But that was just one bubble. Now, if you want to blow a bunch of bubbles, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of bubbles, this is what you do. You take a little bottle like this, a little plastic bottle, cut the end off of it, and then you put a rubber band, and you rubber band a little piece of cloth, like a, like a face cloth or a dish cloth. And then you dip it. Go ahead and do this. We're going to dip it down inside of there, just like that. Here we go. Get it all wet, and then blow inside, and we're going to make hundreds and thousands of bubbles. And look at how that works. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, 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 why do bubbles do that? Bubbles do that because, you know, they're made out of water and soap, aren't they? I forgot to tell you, you're supposed to put water in with that dishwashing liquid as well. So it makes water and bubbles and glycerin. And you know what? Water, ha look at mine. It's standing up. Look at his. It's standing up. And they're very strong structures. Well, water likes to stick to itself, and that's called uh, cohesion. And water likes to stick to other things. And that's like the bottle. And that's like this uh, piece of cloth. But you know what? Are those bubbles, are they floating up in the air and going up? No. No, they're not. But hey, you know what? I'm going to make a very special kind of bubble. And I'm going to make a bubble or some bubbles that float. And they're going to be very light. And then we're going to blow them up. What do you think? I think you better get back because this is going to be fun. Okay, I'm going to get my friend. Let's get uh, Angel up here. Angel Rivera, he's going to help me with this right here. And so I'm going to take and we're going to put the secret ingredient. We're going to put some hydrogen and we're going to make some hydrogen bubbles. Now, hydrogen is a very, very powerful and a very, very light gas. And so I'm going to fill up my balloon right here. Oh, whoa. Man, there we go. We got a big, a big balloon full of hydrogen gas. Now, this is cool. And Max is just leaving the stage. Do you see that? Yeah. Max doesn't want to be around because we're going to have a lot of bubble fiery fun right here. And these bubbles are going to be extremely light and they're going to float in the air. And Angel is going to light them on fire. Are you ready, Angel? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Let's blow some bubbles and see if they're going to float up in the air. Whoa! Whoa. And they do, don't they? Isn't that interesting? Wow. wow! Did you see that? That's amazing, isn't it? You know, those bubbles, and you can come back. Come on back right here. Check this out. These bubbles are interesting. You know, one bubble by itself is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Because when you get a hundred and thousands of bubbles together, like we have these bubbles right here, they're a whole lot more fun, aren't they? Yes. I think so. But you know what? You and I, you know, sometimes we feel like we're all alone. We're just that, like that one little bubble. But you know, when we get together with other friends and other Christians especially, you know what? We can have a tremendous amount of fun. And you know what? We can make things uh, better for people if we just get together. But getting together builds unity and it builds strength. Don't you want to be strong? Yeah. That's right. And we can be strong when we join together and we can do things that one person can't do alone by themselves. Isn't that cool? You know, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be in unity with others and then we can do wonderful things together for Him. Wow, I like that. You know, when we study science, we're learning more about our Creator, God. <laughs> Aaron? Moses? Is that you? Brother. My brother Aaron? Oh, 40 years? So good to see you. Lifetime? How did you know to come? God told me. He told me you would be here. I couldn't believe it, but I came. It's so good to see you. Why are you here? God revealed himself to me in a bush. Yes? It was a bush. A bush that burned, but it was not consumed. Not consumed? Aaron, he's heard of the afflictions. He knows of the afflictions of his people. He knows. He's seen. We've prayed. And he's called you and I. But he will do the delivering from Pharaoh. You and I? Yes. Aaron. To deliver the people? Yes. He will do this. That's what he said to me, but I, I couldn't believe it. I called all the elders of the people. 
They're meeting tonight to, to hear you speak. Come quickly. Go, go. Our sister, Mary. Mary. Oh, how is she? In the She's family? so excited to see you. Elders of Israel. Yes. 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 Remember, I told you I had a dream. Yes. Remember. That God would send a deliverer. Yes. Yes. A deliverer. Today, God Today. sent the deliverer. Today, Today. The deliverer. I, I met him in the wilderness. It is my brother, Moses. Moses. It is as Aaron has said. Can it God be? has spoken. My God has spoken. Life. I've waited for this Tell moment. It's true. God, my whole life. Yes. Free. yes. Oh. It is true. Now tomorrow. We will stand before Pharaoh tomorrow, tomorrow. and yes. we will demand yes. that he let the Hebrews go. Yes. 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 You must go tonight and tell tonight all to the children, don't miss yes. a all the don't Israelites, yes. tell them to pray for us. Yes. Yes. For how can we stand before Pharaoh without the power of yes. God? Yes. Okay. Let's pray now. Yes. Come, yes. Come. Come. Oh, great and mighty Jehovah, yes. please yes. Come. come upon please. us. May Moses and me, may we stand before him in your power. Thank you, God, for giving us a deliverer. We praise you and we thank you. Amen and amen. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, Prime Minister, your report on kingdom production. Oh, great Pharaoh, the productivity is high all over the kingdom except for those Hebrew slaves. They are refusing to work one day a week and the productivity, it's plummeting. Do you know of this? Yes, Father, and we need to do something. Do something we shall. We must keep production going. Yes, we must. We must keep it flowing, work them harder. What is it? Speak. Oh, great Pharaoh, live forever. Ambassadors of the King of Kings to see you. Ambassadors of I know who you are. Who is this King of Kings? He is Jehovah, the Most High, and he commands you, Pharaoh, to let his people go and to worship in the wilderness. Who is Jehovah that I should listen to his word? That I should let his people go? They are slaves. I know not Jehovah. They are mine. Oh. I will not let his people go. Oh, Pharaoh, you must let them go. God has called them into the wilderness to worship for three days, lest he fall upon them and you lose all their productivity. Who are you, Moses and Aaron, to hinder the people from their work? Back to your burdens, both of you. Already you have cost the kingdom with your incessant intervention. Behold, the people of the land, are they not many? And you, and you, you would give them rest from their burdens, Shabbat no less. Well, since they have time to rest, let them make their own straw. In fact, demand that they do more work than even humanly possible. I am Pharaoh of all of Egypt. Not even your God can tell me what to do. Gods, remove these Hebrews from my sight. Go. Oh. Prime Minister, carry out my orders now. Yes, I will immediately. Plagues. On who? On us? On us? us? No, plagues. On Pharaoh and the Egyptians, not on us. Aaron and I will go back again to Pharaoh. Again we will go. Oh, and we will demand that he will allow us to worship in the wilderness. If he does not, God's judgment will fall on the house of Pharaoh and all the land of Egypt. Yes. Listen, people, listen, people. We don't know how long this will take. It, it could take a week, a month, a year, uh, but Pharaoh will eventually listen to the word of the Lord. The plagues will convince him. Now we have to have faith. Will you have faith? Yes. 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 Then, faith. then let's pray. Let's pray. Yes, let's pray. Oh God, 
give us freedom from Pharaoh. You've promised, O oh God, you've promised your deliverance through Moses. Keep Moses strong and keep us faithful. Bring your deliverance. Amen. It's time for Miss Brenda's Book of the Day. And today's book is not a traditional book, is it? Well, you're right, because these are our brand new Kids Time DVD sets. These are all our brand new Kids Time programs. And in fact, um, if you look, boys and girls, Maxwell is on every single one. Look at that. And this is my grandson, Michael, on this one. And I have, uh, oh, I got to show you this one. Number one and number two are going to be my favorites because look, Here's my grandson, my, uh, Jason, on this one. Look at that. And they're, of course, they're with Maxwell on every single one. And there's 10 volumes. Uh, when you see right here, there's one through 10. And a wonderful little case to put them in. You see like that to help them store. And they're all our brand new programs that have been airing on uh, Kids Time with our new Bible stories and Maxwell's in every one and our brand new set. You're going to love these. They just came out. They're brand new. You will not want to miss. Uh, you can get them uh, during non-Sabbath hours right here at 3ABN. You can call 618-627-627. Uh, 4651 or you can go right online to www.3abn.org and you can order your set. Well boys and girls I'm really excited today. I have someone with me all the way from Washington State. His name is Seth. Hi Seth. Thank you for joining me on Kids Time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Yes, you do. And recently you were uh, involved in a kind of a big event, weren't you, on, on trying to witness for Jesus. What was that? Uh, the Kids Up Maker Fair. A ki uh, Maker Fair. Now, boys and girls, you might be wondering, what is a Maker Fair? And uh, I like it. You're saying Maker, like Jesus is our Maker, right? He, he our Creator and our Maker. And you had a Maker Fair. And why did you do that? Uh, just to bring people towards us to make friends with people. That's right. Do you know, uh, it's important when we're witnessing boys and girls that we really love people to Jesus. And I know at Seth's church, they wanted to invite all the community to church so they could get to know them. And what better way to do it? They had a big, huge craft fair where everybody could make something and bring it to the fair. And they invited lots of people to come, didn't they? Mm -hmm. In fact, do you know how many people came? Uh, about 1,000. About 1,000 people. Even the mayor of your town came, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty big event. And they had all these different booths around, and they invited people to come, and they could talk to them and get to know them. And and uh, you were involved in a booth. What was the name of the booth that you were involved in? Uh, spool racer booth. Spool racers. And basically, what did you, what do you need to make a spool racer? And you you make these little cars like that, that race out of spools. And basically, what do you need for spool racing? Uh, just an empty spool like a thread. Like a thread, a yeah. spool of thread. And, and when the thread comes off, you have a wooden spool. And then you have what, what else? And a rubber band and a pencil. A rubber band and a pencil. And that's just uh, all you need for a spool race. And they can uh, race pretty good, can't they? Yes. And I understand that you had a lot of fun helping the different people that came to your booth learning how to make their own, right? Yes. Well, Seth, I'm so glad that you came and joined us today. And I think I'm going to have you stay and help me write, read just a few more letters, will you? Okay. And I want to encourage you, Seth, to keep on sharing Jesus. Boys and girls, there's so many things that you can do. And I think what Seth and his church did uh, to open it up to the community and invite them into the church, that is called friendship evangelism. And it's one of the best ways that you can witness for Jesus because we want to love people to Jesus. We don't want to preach them, you know, and, and, and uh, hammer them with a the hammer and tell them all the things they're doing wrong. That's not a way to love people to Jesus, is it? And so I think what your church did was wonderful. Can you hold this picture up for me? This letter is all the way from Tanzania in Africa. And let's see who it's from here. 
The letter says, Dear Miss Brenda, my name is Modesta and I'm from Tanzania. I'm 14 years old and I enjoy your programs very much. My favorite is Praise Time and I enjoy that so much. I share Jesus by telling my friends not to fight and how much Jesus loves them. I completed my grade seven this year. Would you please pray for me that I will pass my exams and I'd love to join Kids Club. Don't forget to write back from Modesta. Well, Modesta, we will get those Kids Club lessons to you right away, and I'm glad that you are witnessing to your friends by encouraging them not to fight with each other. Seth, it's never good to fight with each other, is it? Yep. And uh, so we want to, it's all about loving people to Jesus. Thank you for holding that up for me. We have an email here. I love your emails. Keep writing, boys and girls. I love your emails. I love your letters and also those pictures you send. This says, Dear Miss Brenda, my name is Daniel and I'm 11 years old. I pray for my friend's mom who isn't a Christian. My other friend's dad has cows and one cow got eye cancer, which is incurable. We all prayed for a couple of weeks and now the cow is healed, which is a miracle because I eye cancer is incurable. Isn't God good? Goodbye from Canada. God bless. And it says, love Daniel. Daniel, that is a miracle. And don't forget to thank Jesus. When we pray and God answers our prayers, we, he always wants us to say thank you and to praise him. Isn't that right, Seth? Mm -hmm. I think we have time for just one more letter. Uh, this one, oh, I love it. It's got a picture. Will you hold this for me, Seth, please? I love your pictures, boys and girls. This one is from uh, Casper. It says, Dear Miss Brenda, my name is Casper and I'm 12 years old. I play the violin and I love watching Kids Time with my little sister. She loves singing. It said, You visited our church in New Zealand in Hamilton Church and that's where I met you. I'm glad I got to meet you. I love Kids Time from Casper. Well, thank you so much, Casper. Keep watching and I want to thank you, Seth, for joining us today. Remember, kids, it's Kids Time to share Jesus. If we want to get a really good look at the dunes, we got to get out into the middle. The best way to do that is on one of these. Come on, guys. the sand blows around, the dunes form two slopes. As the sand blows this way, it forms the windward face, the flatter slope. The back side of the dune, the steep side, is called the leeward side of the dune. What's it called? Leeward! That's right, the leeward side of the dune. Hey, I'm gonna take a... So you're probably wondering, what is a dune? It's a giant pile of sand. Well, how did it get there? Well, the biggest factor in forming a sand dune is wind. What is the biggest factor? Wind. That's right, wind. With this much wind, anything would get blown around. Especially something tiny like sand. Sand grains come in different sizes. The small grains will get carried through the wind, but the larger grains will actually bounce along the surface. Boing, boing, boing. Which kind of grains will bounce along the surface? Larger ones! That's right, the larger ones. I'm gonna take a close-up picture of the sand. You know? It's almost time for kids.
kids' time. We're gonna be late. It's time to share. There's a world out there looking for a friend like Jesus. It's time to share. There's a world out there. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Let's tell him that he loves us so. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Hi, boys and girls. Do you like to read stories? I sure do. Sometimes the story is so interesting that I can't wait to find out what happens. So I peek ahead and I read the ending just to see if everything turns out okay. Well, the Bible is full of stories where God told people how their stories would end long before they actually ended. But the people didn't always believe him. They didn't trust God when he said things would turn out okay. Of course, today we can read those stories and we know that things turned out just the way God said they would. Best of all, the Bible tells us how our story is going to end someday. And if we give our hearts to Jesus, it will be a very happy ending. After all, you can always trust God to do exactly what he says he'll do. I'm really happy about that, aren't you? Do you know what else I'm happy about? That's right, it's time for Nature Time. Oh, hi kids, it's me, Rich Aguilera, and I'm glad you're here. As usual, I'm looking around and taking pictures of some of the amazing nature out there. It's everywhere. Anyway, I'm so happy that you're with me here today, because today we're gonna learn about dunes. What are we gonna learn about? Dunes! <laughs> That's right, dunes, come on. Picture the windward side and the steep leeward side. Maybe I'll run down the leeward side. Ah! Sand dunes aren't found everywhere, but sandy beaches like this are very common around the world. I'm gonna take another picture. Walking on the beach reminds me of a story I once heard. I wanna tell it to you. This person writes, one night I had a dream that I was walking on the beach with God. As we walked, we talked about the different moments of my life. That's when I looked back and noticed that there was two sets of footprints, mine and God's. I noticed that during the hardest time of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I got worried about this, so I asked God, Lord, I thought you said that if I follow you, 